Folks, I'm here to tell you and Andre that what you're looking at here, this Jeep Gladiator, which is just a step above the base model, which comes with a six-speed manual transmission, is a bargain, and it is a hell of a good little truck. Yeah, dude, but you know, it's no Rubicon. I mean, it doesn't have lockers, it has kind of a small wheel package. It's kind of simple, dude. Why is it so cool? Well, first of all, if you think about the fact that about 95% of the people who buy a Jeep do not leave standard wheels and tires on their vehicle. True. Almost everybody swaps them out. If you get a base model, you swap them out. You got yourself a less expensive vehicle with the wheels you want. And on top of that, yes, okay, it doesn't have the lockers, but as it sits, this is actually a really good off-road truck. Think about it this way, guys. This one comes in, what, about 38? But 39 sticker. Okay, 39 yeah. sticker. Base model for one of these, okay? The absolute entry lot sport, you know, around $34,000. That's a manual transmission. That's no frills, right? So let's say between the two of them, $35,000 will get you a base model truck with a couple little goodies. Fair enough? Okay. Think about how many trucks out there. Quad cab, right? Crew, okay, okay. Crew cab. Give you four wheel drive system, the manual transmission for that price. Well, How actually, many? Well, actually, maybe one more. Toyota has a manual, right? Yes. Tacoma has a six-speed manual transmission. This offers a six-speed manual. Yes. Um, it'd be hard to buy a Tacoma for 34, 35. It'd right, right. See, that's what I'm kind of getting at. This is a bit of a bargain. And then on top of that, not to mention the fact that you can remove this top, which is really great for people who have hair or who enjoy it without hair. I like, I really do like taking the top off of a vehicle um, and you get the soft top. This one does have the optional hard top, but you get more. Come here. This truck, as it sits, can tow around 4,000 pounds. Wait, what? Yeah, I know. It's not great. Okay. But you can tow more if you get the manual transmission with the beefier rear end, which you can get in higher models. So like Toyota, Almost all their models do have a manual option, but I wanted to show you something else. For those of you wondering, this interior is more comfortable than the Toyotas. You cannot debate me on that one. I won't. So let me get in actually. Yeah, go ahead. So actually the back seat, let me test it out once again. You know what I love about the Gladiator in general huh. is headroom. Exactly, exactly and, my point. And without the top, it's infinite headroom actually. Exactly. But but right now, look, my knees. Um, I'm just over six two. I have plenty of knee space. I have probably about four fingers of headroom left. So that's pretty impressive. And then in the front, it's a similar story, except, dude, the front seat, the driver's seat. Yeah. And Tommy and I, and you've heard us probably talk about this, um, it doesn't quite go back enough for long legs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I have stubbier legs, and I'm almost as tall, I'm pretty much as tall as Tommy. So I represent a chunk of Americans who actually can get in here comfortably, if I shall show you. I want to see this. All right. Oh, me. there's a sticker, dude. There is the sticker, and we'll show it in a sec. Oops, sorry. Hat. Now, here's the best part. Best part of all. And why I'm so excited. See, guys, full disclosure, I've been looking at buying a Jeep almost identical to this one, even the same color, except for the entry-level model. I was seriously looking at it. <sighs> then I found out that I had to buy a car for my daughter. Anyway, eventually, I might get one. Why? right there now this is an Ison six-speed manual transmission and there's some magazines out there that don't like this transmission power to the um, to this v6 I completely disagree with them look the throws are actually nice and crisp hear that nice I love it I like it a little bit better than the Toyota's Nathan is making this point that this truck is affordable. So, yeah, so this is the sticker price, $39,820, so almost forty grand. Now, that sounds like a lot, but remember what you get for the price. 
By the way, we couldn't do this video without our friends at Johnson Auto Plaza, right? right. They helped us uh, procure this truck just for this video. They did? Uh, yeah, and, and this is a unique truck because there's not many manuals out there. This is your typical 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. And other than the Jeep Wrangler, this is the only application that actually is hooked up to a manual transmission as an option. Yeah. There is no other FCA vehicle that has a manual transmission hooked up to their Pentastar. And as it sits, as it's like 285 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque. Why couldn't they give it a little bit more towing capacity? 4,000 pounds, I understand. You can go up to 4,500 pounds if you get this as a Rubicon and some other higher-end versions, which, by the way, white is the least expensive color because it costs zero dollars. Almost every Jeep Gladiator that's out there has white as a free color so you don't and have then, to pay extra like an orange or something right 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 or the reds or the greens or the blues and all that stuff so that's important to keep in mind so this is almost your discount vehicle but it does have some niceties now payload <laughs> let's talk about that real quick oh i, I want to see this do you want to hold it okay. hold the sticker yeah i want to see uh what all the right. payload is i'm gonna say oh between 1100 and 1200 pounds i'm gonna be right Dude, you hit it on the nose. 1,192 pounds. Am I good or what? Uh, which is actually better than that diesel we test drove, because <laughs> that was like under 1,000 pounds. Part of the reason why is because that diesel is you know, such a heavy vehicle, it loses a lot of its payload capacity just because of the engine alone. Yeah, but it's still not great. I mean, no. if you look at, I mean, the T Toyota TRD Pro had less uh, payload, uh -huh. but, but if you look at like a Ford Ranger, Ford Rangers have a lot of payload built in. So do a lot of vehicles that have automatic transmissions. So I, I started doing some research and I discovered that for some reason, manual trucks just don't have the payload that automatic trucks do. And there are pretty much just two manual trucks out there. So in my mind, that's okay. Everybody's used to us uh, reviewing Rubicon and more right, right, right. trucks. I mean, this is a more simple bumper, right? It does not have a provision for a winch. Obviously, you can change that, right? You well, that's, that's a, kind of the whole point. Right, you can put you a different bumper. You have a blank slate that you can modify. And the thing is, Jeep is one of the most modified, uh, I'm talking about all Jeeps, are some of the most modified vehicles in the world. When people buy them, they have in their head what they want, which is usually more than what they've purchased. And in my case, Actually, I really don't want a winch. I don't, I don't want any of that stuff. I would probably have a high lift jack or something like that that I can use as a winch in an emergency. There are plenty of things about this vehicle that as it sits is completely fine with me. The best part is the driving experience. Many people ask us, can I buy a Sport and turn it into a Rubicon in my garage? Uh, kind of. It's, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds, right? Because no, no, this is Installing that's, lockers, bigger axles. Disconnecting sway bar uh, alone is. That's yeah. a whole deal that Jeep knows how to do and they do it actually more efficiently for cost, right? So this truck is not really to build up your own Rubicon, right? It's more of a kind of a daily truck that goes off road. Well, that's exactly it. Uh, look, guys, we go to Fins and Things all the time in Moab, Utah, and I guarantee you that this would have no problem going through that trail. Not a single problem, even with these street tires. The bottom line is that this truck has good traction, pretty good weight distribution, really off-road. Its biggest issue as it sits is the fact that its breakover angle is not great. And that's the super long wheelbase playing against you. But for a guy like me who does mostly commuting and occasional off-roading and camping and occasional light towing, perfect and I love the price. Oh, I want to show you something else actually before we actually hit the road. Okay, super low crawl ratio. Okay, I'm in first gear. I'm just gonna ease off. I'm not touching the accelerator. And away we go. <laughs> now the reason I know about this is that, oh, a little while ago, we had a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon with a manual transmission that we took up our cliffhanger trail. And I was actually the guy who was doing it and oh, it was awesome uh, i put it in first gear locked everything up and let it climb up the hill all on its own i didn't touch anything it just climbed it's much better riding uh, than a wrangler i gotta tell you and transitions from one gear to the other i like how it clicks through okay it's not as awesome as like something from honda mazda or Audi, oh, Audi used to have the best manual transmissions, but it's actually pretty damn good, and I much prefer it over the Toyota. It has to rev high in order to really give you decent performance. That I've noticed. But otherwise, 
That's how you rev it, big deal. That's the whole point of a manual, right? You get to get it up to red line and really push it. So we'll do a little bit of that right here, okay? You can hear the engine note. No problem. Very smooth, very easy. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I, I know this was self-indulgent, but I really truly am thinking about buying one of these for myself in the near future. So stay tuned for that. And for a lot more on our various TFL channels, I'll see you next time.